So here on page Samach Aleph, we're going to finish this now. And uh, this is the end of this drush, and then the next drush is really rather delicious also. But it goes, you know, you have to think back of how, how much you knew about this subject to begin with, about what you know about the Kibaiti and the people yeah. that comes down, what you know about the creation of the beard of um, uh, Zerante, and how it is that it calls and uh, so on until we're with the Hashem, Hashem. Now we realize that. That part where you say, um, let's see, how does it go? The uh, Vyavor Hashem al Panav Vayikra. Hashem Hashem. That's as far as we've gotten. That's as far as we've gotten. And there's lots and lots of things there that we saw. Now we're going to see some other things. We're going to finish up. So he says, uh, this is on page Samach Aleph. It says, Kavana Gimel. It's the third Kavana that you can have with his name Hashem Hashem. Havaya Shnia, so let's say the second Havaya. Shehi Dalit Tikunin Tatoin Bedik Nebizah. Now we're in the beard of Zeranta. And we have added on at least the illumination or the impression. It's a little more like temporary, but it's there. The four, the four uh, uh, Tikunin, upper Tikunin, which is a Havaya. And uh, now, though, he says something else. This is another Kavanah. Another kavana is is that the second havaya of the dalatikuni at the time the dik the dezah that would be corresponding to the nine of the beard the, the bottom of it koral havaya it calling out to a havaya shiyarid medalu kibarti the rif that should come down from the four kibarti of a rif that were on the orif of zeran pins in other words it's just telling you a different process that's going on at the same time. As all of the other processes, beyond of the derek upon him, and that part that can come out onto the face, so it the bottom part. That's all he's really saying is, is that the bottom part of the beard of Zer Anpin, which is permanent, because Zer Anpin's beard is, let's say, a Chagat Nai. So this is the Nai. So the Nai is calling for the Hibarti to pair up. To make all the action that it has to do. In other words, it's a complete call. This is what he's saying. First, he's saying that the first, the first part is the uh, the hivarti and the tip of that glow that's on the, the on the front uh, of the beard that's uh, making the four top. That's calling up to the four top sphera uh, uh, tikkunim of erikan. That was the first of them. The second one is is that the chaga of the beard of Zeranfin is calling. And the third one, there's another Kavana, that not only of all of that calling to this, you know, to this Hivarti and bring down light, all of them wants bright light brought down to all calling. That is the Chabad Chagat nine of the beard of Zer Anpin are all calling. They're all calling. That's Hashem Hashem. So now let's read this part. Kuf Yud Zayin. He says, Achen Kaf Tekavin Oi. So now I have this Kavana. Olad Kavana Shlishis. I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous. I'm reading very quick. So he says the second havaya, which is the nine of the beard, the tikvut of the of the shabadala tikunim tatoim. Once again, it's the yudke bavke, which is called the nine. It's the nine of the uh, of the beard of Zeranpin. It's called the shabatesh tikunim uh, Zeranpin. He kore el havaya the arba hivarti. It's calling that original havaya, the one that came out of the dal hivarti, achre reisha derek anpin, which is on the back of the reisha of derek anpin, hanim shach is der achor, which comes back around the back of zir anpin. A lot of times we pronounce this, or a lot of people do, derek ach. Rabbi Mogavi, for one, is a person that does. So we see that there's different kinds of shitas that Rabbi Memran says not, not important. He says, Hanem Shach of Derek Ach Ba'orev Zer Anpin, Bo'oberis and Me'iribah, and it passes through there, which we know, and it comes into the Malkin. Baharin is Bo'orish Shlosha Gavano. So that he said, that's the third command. So basically, it's really the Hivarti calling. The Hivarti, what we say, whatever produces the four upper Tikkun of Zer Anpin that calls. Then we also say, well, you know what? The Haggad of the original beard, it's calling too. And now we say that the nine of the original beard is also calling. It's calling right to that, that Hivarti. What's that Hivarti to break out? 
to be able to get onto the phase, to bring down that shefa, and like that. So, let's go to number Kuf Yud Zion, and we'll read the light print on in the Tibba Kavanos. So he said, Od Kavana Shlishis is a third Kavana. Mechadish Arav, he also brings this new idea. Shagam Maravaya Shniya, that also the second Avaya, which one, which, what does he mean by the second Avaya? He says the second one, of the Teshu Dikuni Dikta Vizir Anfin, which are permanent. Shahavi calls Zaman, call Hazaman, a Bizma, the Tnei Redis Adalachi Varthi. So he's talking about the original that was there the whole time. Before you had the beginning of the Kibarti coming in and the production of the upper four of the Diknos of Ziranfin. Korigamhi. So this this low level is also called the Tosephus Arab seeking what? This is from the bottom to the top, seeking an additional amount of illumination. They want light. But it's not about low, it's not calling on the dikna of a rich, like was the case that we originally saw, like the first avaya calls to it, that is the avaya that is produced from the kibarti, he's calling on that havaya, originally going way back, in other words, this is happening all at the same time, to the havaya which is coming down the back of the head of Zeranka, calling that one over there, uh, that part that's on, around the back of the head of Zerav, the Shatav, the Shakav. So did it should come forward, in other words, do its, do its action. Everybody, the whole beard of, he's saying the whole beard of Zerav is calling, calling, calling to build this light up. Now he wants to say what the three are. This is, uh, the Teva Gavanos telling us. Avaya shall the Dalakibarti. First one is the Havaya of the Dalakibarti. Kora the Havaya shall the Dalakibarti dictate the Eric Anpin, which is, it produces itself as Kibarti gets off of the face when it calls up to the other four of Eric Anpin. So then that the should shine on. So he said, Avaya shall the Dalakibarti and the Sayyim Dizal. Let's talk about the four Tikunim, which is the Chagat of the Tikunim of Zeranpin. In other words, his original nine. Koragam ki la havaya shall the dalit tikuni dikna the erekanpin, uh, the, and the higher book. Also calling those upper four of the beard of Rich to shine too. So those two are calling to the upper beard of Rich. The third one, a havaya shall the dalit tikuni machwonin shall azaz. So the vaya that has to do with the, the nine, which would be the, the four tikunin down below, which is also yudke bavke, but it's, it's, uh, considered in the position of the nine. Chorus the Havaya shall the Hibarti calls to the Havaya, which is the Hibarti, the Rich Lahoyer brought the shine on. Find the self. So he has something in the shepherd down below to skip that. Now he goes to a different little piece here, uh, which he doesn't conclude. It just raises a little bit of appetite. That's about it. He's Boyer Ha'aras Havaya the Rich, but Havaya the Zah. So now we want to explain. Now here's, here's an interesting thing that we have to understand that the Panemius is always inside of the Kitsonis. So he says that the light of the Vaya de Rich inside of the Bhai de Zah. So then he says this in in Harayo, because we said that we had three times seventy two makes Rayo, it's a very interesting idea, which is Rayo is also the Mati of Gabura. She ate the Gabura de Zah, the Raya Bamalk is the Zah. So this Indian is really not explained, I don't believe. Let's go to number Kuf Yotes in the light print, and it says, the Dam is Boy of the Hall. So let's, let me explain to you, or show you. So he wants to say this idea that the first two Havayos, which would be the Chabad and the Chagat of the beard of Eric Anpin, how they shine to the secondary meirot b'shnei rabbios hashmios dezan. In other words, the chagat. It is the chabad. That's what it sounds like. He says the chabad chagat of the beard of erikanpin should shine on the chagat nai of zeran. He says abal olam enu rak teishu tigunidik the dezan. But there's only nine in zeran. 
Elashaha Aros Haim Bemisbar Yud Gimel, but it, it's really you have to understand it doesn't mean that you're creating thirteen. So I guess he meant he, he meant to say, let me go backwards. I was a little confused about this. Let me I'd like to read it again. Gam is boy lucha, et shne a bios and rishon is the erikantin. Okay, so that's uh, erikantin has a beard with three havayas in it, one on top of the next. Let's say one inside the next, whatever you like. So their shining, those upper two of their anpin, are shining onto the lower two of their anpin. That match, to me, that doesn't match up really well. That doesn't digest really well. But that's what he said. But the, the fact is, it's only nine to kumi bizat. So what? So this is another fact. He said the Tikkunim and Zah are really nine. But the fact is that when you get all this light shining on it, it has the, he says, Shaha Shaha Aros Hain, the Mizbar Yud Gimel Aros. But there are 13 different radiances coming out, not just nine. Kamoshi is Boyer Od, that's the Hashem. We're going to get into it more, he says. In his Bar so now he said, we explain to you, Eshiech Bechinus Rayo. How there is a Rayo in Bagavura. We know Rayo is the Mat Bagavura. Hazachar Shuhu Hazah. This is Gvura Hazachar. It's in the Gvura of Zerantin. But Amnam Gam Yesh Bechinus Rayo. Acher, there's another Rayo besides that. El Hamalchus that goes to Malchus. The Nimsha Gam came in Dikna de Erekanpin, and the whole thing comes out of the beard of Erekanpin. The Hupa opens in, it goes this way. Amra Hakos of Chaim Shukachtik. Then he says, I. Chaim Vital, Rabbi Chaim Vital, I guess I should say. I forgot. Tishlu Lazlashbo. So he says, I forgot. You know, I try to uh, imagine what it was like uh, for Chaim Vital. He was only with the Rav for a year and a half. Where did he meet him? You know, where did he get all this information? Uh, the, the, how, how, wh- on what level do they communicate? Now, in Rabbi Mimran's book, which is really good, he says that the, pro- the the fastest thing in the universe is thought. And it's like, I don't know, he had some kind of really, I don't know how scientists know this or, you know, how you do it, but it's not, spe- of course, not speech. But he says thought is the fastest, like one millionth of a light year. Something like that. A light year is one millionth of, I don't know what it is. It's like a million times faster than anything. So, I don't know why I said that. Why did I say that? I don't know. We'll see if it has something to do with this. I was in a deep thought and I forgot it. Uh, let's go to Kufya Tess. Let's read the what we can get out of this. Uh, so, Od Maskem Harab, so as the Rav is finishing this, about the Shnei Havayu Shal Erech Rich, that there are two Havayus, the top Havayu, the Haino Havayu Shal Dikta Darich, Havayu Shal Tizbarti Darich. Oh, I misunderstood that. So, I hope I'm not losing you too badly. I'll translate this, and I misunderstood it. It said, Oh, uh, Maskem Harab. The Rab makes this conclusion. That the two Havayos, they come from a rib. He's not talking about the beard of a rib. That's what I misinterpreted. Interpreted. He's talking about the Havaya. The Havaya uh, shall dikna the rib, which is one of the elements. And the Havaya shall the Hivarti the rib. Those two now are on the face of Eric uh, Zeranten in the top four slots of his beginning. So they shine. They're now the top part, so that's not really the top. This is another way of saying those two Avayos, which compose the Chabad of the beard of Zeranten, now have an abundance of light. And as a result of that, they shine down in the Shtei Havayos or Shniyosh That would be the Chadad and the Nai Zeranta. So it's only one beard, but the top part of the beard now has these two big time Havayos that came from Eric Anpin. And now there's an abundance of light and it's shining downwards. This is basically what he's saying. Avalin Roshan Mizbaha Aros Hehu Yud Gimel, but he says, but despite the fact that they really, you have 
13 different Ha'aros, because the upper four are bright and shiny. And the other two sections down below, they were there all along. They're bright, but they're not shining like the one up and above. But you have to understand this. When you say Gavor, he only still has Teshu Tikkuni Dik Bazaar. He only still has nine Tikkuni. So even though you have illumination that's so great, that's what you did. You added illumination with these two Havayas that came from Maria. They're able to shine downwards, but they're not part of the Bias. Something like that, he said. When the Messiah rubbed the Kol Matrin is Boy of so he says that everything that we have in this parrot is all about the concept of rise. So he said, the Gabur, and where is this Raya located? The Gabur shall Zafar Shuzir Anten, the Gabur of Zafar, which is Anten. So he says, so then the last of it is, that's where it's located. Now that doesn't tell me too much. Not yet. Uh, because we're going to get into some more other great things about Leah. After all, we're from the tribe of Levi. And Leah, I don't know if this is all going... Your father's name was uh, uh, Menachem ben Moshe? Okay, Moshe ben Menachem. I'll probably get his credit sooner or later. But all of this is really uh, coming out of that original, you know, that original shear. So he says, now he writes this, is, but so what, what, one of the things that I want to understand, I need to understand, is what Raya is all about. Because this is like a, a very, very important in all of the davening, but uh, especially of Rosh Hashanah, but uh, all of the davening. And since you are Rosh Hashanah, it should be important to you, but I don't know enough about it to be able to say, other than I know that it's Gematri Gabura. It's made out of three facadim, and it's a gematria of gavur. And it is the concept of a sweet gavur. That's what you want. The world needs gavur of gavur. Quoting Rabbi uh, Mimran, there's nothing wrong with gavur. It's only if it's not sweetened that there's a problem. So part of what, not part, maybe the main thing that we want to do is sweeten those gavur. And that's maybe why all of this drush that we're talking about, he says, is really about riot. So he said, and also because the word bav, bavor has the word raya in it. I just don't know all the parts. Now he adds it to the shell of raya. There's another gavana over here about the raya. So after the habshafa comes from the dikna, the shell eric anpin the malchus. So wine is going from eric anpin. I don't know. He means the malchus. I don't know what he means. So there's a whole thing there, but I cross it. Marco Shashakach Kavanazir, but he forgot. He's forget. He, he, you know, just to think of what he had to go through in order to get what he got. Ulam, uh, that's what I was saying about the thoughts. How fast? That was what I was trying to say. How fast could they communicate? What kind of communication produces all of this depth in a year and a half? I told you the story about the guy that wrote the Uriah. I don't know. So it's like this. He's in Egypt. Uh, I have a, a little introduction, which I'd like to read uh, sometime, uh, to his, to who the Re was. I could just tell you real quickly. The Re's father was, um, I think his name was Shalom. He was Ashkenaz. And his mother, they somehow, I just don't really understand, got involved with the with the expulsion from Spain. And they wound up in Egypt. And the uh, first they wound up in they were in Jerusalem. And then uh, after the bris of Shlomo, uh, of uh, the Ari, which was, the Sandek was Eliyahu Navi, whole story there. Uh, after that, um, they moved to, the father died. He died while he was still young. And the mother moved to uh, Egypt where her brother lived. And uh, his name was something like Parnassa, which is Par Parnassa. You know? Something like he was a very wealthy guy. And he took care of them, and they re-eventually married one of his daughters. Something like that. That's what a little story is. Mary's cousin. Yeah, Mary's cousin. That's what it sounds like. I can read it to you in the verbatim. It's, it's a little hard for me to understand, but I think I got the basic idea. And, and that was his basic family and there he was taken care of and supported and 
the book that I have, which, which is called uh, Sichus uh, Yitzchak. It's a it's a Yitzchak ben Zikri, uh, where I had we went through some of a lot of well his main work, Pachat Yitzchak, uh, which is really the first twenty chapters of the uh, of the Eitz Chaim. It's really worth worth it because it's uh, if you call it, you know like it's a spiritual book, like uh, makes it easy to learn it. Anyway, uh, he brings the, the history of Kabbalah in his book. It's not so easy for me to read, but he brings all these people, all the from way back, you know, all the people who trained with them, Moshe de Leon, the Zohar, all of this stuff, and finally to the Urim. And so uh, he learned over there under the tutelage of several rabbis, uh, names that we should know, but I don't. And he was always called uh, Yitzchak, uh, uh, he was always called Ashkenazi. You know, he's because his father was Ashkenazi. But he spoke Ladino, which was the language that everybody spoke then, and sometimes a form of Spanish. And uh, that's the beginning of his life. That's what I know about the beginning of his life so far. I really don't know. Uh, you want me to tell you a story uh, that I heard, which I think has to do with this story, but I'm not sure. Uh, the stories I heard is on tales of Hasidic tales of inspiration. That's what this is a new story. And the man told this story. Now, the funny thing about it is, you know about Cubans and like a lot of them are mixed in with Jews somehow. Uh, and unfortunately, it, you know, some of them try to get back. I do probably know that. Anyway, um, this guy was a competitor of mine. I met him at a, a we used to chase flyer fires. You know? So, sure. so I met him at uh, this fire. He walks up to me says in the name of his boss, uh, uh, who was a guy that I know was a gambler, he really didn't know anything, he starts to tell me, he says, I'm going to tell you a story about my boss here. So he said, the story goes like this, he said, after the expulsion, and the expulsion was very, very dangerous to the United States, because after a while, just to show everybody had to leave it the same day, some people got out early, but other people, you know, getting everything together, trying to liquidate, trying to do anything, imagine what a horrible thing this was. So here's a family that wound up uh, three or four people in squalor in Alexandria. They made it. They made it to this. They had no money to pay some of this family. So they, 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 they couldn't buy much. Or, you know, they, it was like that. So they managed to beg, steal, borrow, whatever, uh, just a few coconuts, you know, just a little bit of money, multiply a little piece of bread and, and some nuts. That's, and they would make it. You know, they would make a peso. As the man is, is, uh, start to cry as I tell the story. He says, as the man was on his way to the market, he thought the slaves were there. And he saw, he saw there that they were selling a three year old girl, Jewish, Jewish girl. She was one of the ones that they were making. And she, nobody wanted her. <laughs> we wouldn't make so he he bought them and they were living but they were living. He has he came back home and his wife, everybody's hungry now. Everybody's upset because of the hunger and they're hoping, you know, he's gonna come back and you know he's gonna leave a beautiful place up and he comes back and he said, What are we gonna do? And she said, you know, what is his wife's reaction to this? A mother not pretending everybody I don't know, can you imagine the scene inside of that house? Well, he leaves and goes outside. And <coughs> he falls apart and he realizes he's not going to make a pace of things for another month or two that he's going to be stuck for the week. And he leaves until he can't fly anymore. And so he's in a he's in a crowded, you know, slummy kind of area and a man stops him. And he says, he said, Look, I, I need a favor. And he says, what, what can I do for you? He says, just hold this. Another man's going to come by. And when he comes by, you know, uh, you'll give it to me. Okay? And he, he's broken, so he just takes it. The man, another man comes by, and he uh, gives him the thing, and the man gives him a little bit of money. Thank you. It's more money. Yeah, yeah. And so, 
After that, another man came. Every day people would come, and it was known, it became known as the Ish Rem. So people brought him in to give, this was a survival situation, where people had to survive. The man became extremely, extremely wealthy. And uh, this was the beginning of the two-part story in the, uh, in, in, in the tales of Hasidic inspiration. The other part I really think is apocryphal, but I think that this one is leading up to the, the story. It's, if it's not exactly something that happened, but it's something that could have happened, maybe in fact did, that this man, eventually the little girl, they named her Mazal, and from that, on, that time on he went up, just at each now. Now I think that somehow this may have something to do with the Arif, but I'm not sure because I don't know the lineage of this uncle, of his uncle. But the uncle provided for him everything that he possibly had needed in terms of the time that he needed. Now, this, the way I started this story was like this, because I was really talking about Chaim Vital. And the thing is, how in the world did Chaim Vital get all of this information like this in a year and a half? I think it was only there two years, six months. He claims, according to the uh, the Yitzhak ben Esri, uh, that he actually was a student of the Ramah. I don't know. Uh, Yaakov Cronenberg says that the, the Shmuel is that uh, that Chaim Vital was, was the was the big time rabbi there. And when the Uri showed up, so the Uri first of all taken a humble approach. He's a he's a snuer. And uh, Chaim Vital says, why should I go visit him? Everybody says he's something. Why don't you come visit me? He says he did that for six months. Until some things happened, which we have to research, that showed the Arif that he was and when Vital came to him. And in a year and a half, we managed this, all that we see before us. Amazing. Uh, so the story, the metaphor for this, or the story behind this, is that the Arif was in Egypt. And he was a tremendous student. Uh, he uh, learned with tremendous his mother. Uh, the uh, Eliyahu uh, Anabi learned with them. He uh, was his sangha. And the early law who also uh, uh, appeared to his father, the Ashkenaz, and told him that he <laughs> that's what's going to happen. Uh, and so this means he's in the base Medrash and he do he's dozing. And a man is in the base Medrash and he sees him over there on the bench with his head down. And uh, he sees he's whispering, he's, he's talking to himself, he's talking. So he goes over and he puts his ear next to the next to the Uri's mouth. And Uri wakes up. And he says to him, what are you doing? He says, well, Rabbi, I, 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 I just couldn't believe what I saw here. I wanted to see what you were saying. And he said that if I had to tell you what I was saying, it would take me 60 years. So here we had this thing, we, 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 we had this thing where this is such a tremendous depth that the, uh, and, and, and we know, this is my thinking anyway, we know that the real energy of the universe is nothing. And that the closer you get to that, the smaller it gets. In other, in other words, the smaller our grasp gets of it. Because it's, it's, it's non-existent. And we're constantly talking about the borderline between existence and non-existence. And so we're always looking to track but the fact is it's very small. Something really, really small means that in order to be able to develop that out so that it got out from your mind through all your processes and came out through your voice, okay, that's, that takes 60 years. <laughs> so that's the reason why, that's why I think it's the reason why Chaim Vital, Rabbi Chaim Vital was able to, to get all of because it's like a door inside of a door inside of a door. And if you got to the original door, or right through to that door, you, you know, you've got a lot to do. Okay, so let me tell you another thing. And maybe sometimes we want to split this year into two parts so that we do one part of this, which we are on a regular basis, like a half an hour. 
we can't do more, we would do another 15 minutes on something else. And there are a lot of things that we could do. One of the things is that would possibly be interesting to me is this year that I've been trying to do in Parshas Pinchas. Parshas Pinchas is loaded. And the story was that I went to Baha'i Bar Mitzvah, Chaim Ash's son Bar Mitzvah, and Chaim made sure that he sat me next to these guys named Grunberg. So, who are the Grunbergers? That's the people from the uh, Kabbalah Center. You know, we know some other names because we saw their books. There's a Red Dr. Berg and some other people. But basically, the Grunbergers are, uh, are Hasidim. They come from Hasidish people, Heimish people. And so, they have a branch of them that, you know, making money off of it. Okay? That's just what it is. Not to say that it's illegitimate, but I talked to them. So he said, in the course of this conversation with me, because I know these guys know a lot of Zohar, I mean a lot. So he said to me, well, you know, there's all these Parshas Pinchas that are so deep. He said, he says this to me, you know what's in Parshas Pinchas. Oh, yeah, I know what's in Parshas Pinchas. So I decided that if I ever had a chance, I would try to learn Parshas Pinchas. And I got to a certain place. That's what they give out to everybody. You know, small little Oh, well. <laughs> well, I want to learn it in the Matip Midabash, which I, I got. It's very big. Okay. It's very big. But here's here's what's interesting about it. It really goes along with what I was saying. Is it's that it goes to the or at the place where I'm at right now. It's mostly Rai Mahemna, but he's talking about um, the organs of the body. And the Kedusha that's in the organs and the different plays within the organs. For example, the liver is a is the seed of the Samach Mem. And then you have the lungs. So he's talking, and I pretty much got to the lungs, and I'm not too much further past it. It feels like there's a lot of water in the lungs. So what does water do? The water is chesed. So you have to see how the, he's going that way. That maybe you might like to pick that up with me. That's one possibility. Another possibility is as if you're interested in meditation, which I am interested in, but I haven't been able to move myself you know, to actually do it. Because this book by Rabbi Miran is really a hooper. It's a cheap book. It's, uh, I made him a donation to help him try to get it in the second publication to get it out. I don't know how many people are really ready for this, but there are many different kinds of meditations that are tremendously helpful for prayer. I mean, and so that's another thing that I would like to do, and then, you know, there's other things. We might just tell me what to do. Okay, I want to leave that with you and let you think about it. Uh, we're going to have a break to let you know I'm going to Israel. Uh, and let me tell you something else. Just a little piece of Torah that you don't know. Because where you're at right now is, is that you, can, you are um, potentially really one of the great Kabbalists <laughs> in my lifetime. And, <laughs> and anyway, I mean, I well, you miss the the Otsros Chaim. Because the Otsros Chaim has got so many different things in it that you need to know, and in sequence. It's it's more complete than any other of the works of, of the Re. However, you can access the all of those things from here. But they're going, you know, they're somewhere else, but they bring in, like we just learned about the Kibarti. I, I didn't I didn't know all of those things. But I knew about the Kibarti because I've been through a lot. I've seen a lot of stuff. Well, here, let's talk about Leia. Now, we talk about, this is what you have to know that you missed. The, uh, there are three Olamos, let me see if it's three or four, three Olamos that come before the Olamatika. The first olam is called the uh, olam hakudim. Olam hakudim is where the aspects of physicality start first start to bind together, and it gives birth from there into the uh, uh, the which is called the olam hanikudim. We know what nikudim are, they can die, etc. And the nikudim actually form themselves up, and if we had, uh, we have to have to think about getting you some kind of visual display over there. But they formed themselves up in the form of ten Nikudim. There was a Kachav and a Chabad. And a Kachav, I guess you would say, 
and there was a dust. Anyway, there was a Chabad that were in a triangular portion, formation in the head. And the next seven spheros were in a straight line going down. So what happened was is that these these Nakudos are all dimmy. And how you got to the, them being there and how they developed, that's all the details of their Tzadikah part of Mount Tzadikah. So because of the fact that they were all dimmy and there was no balance to them, they all broke, but they broke one at a time. So the first one was this, was the, the which is called the king of Das, and Das broke, and everything that was inside of Das because Das inherited the first three. Das that's where it, but it's not over. This is the Kachav, which is in a triangular formation. So they worked together to a certain extent. They gave everything they had to Das. So Das it was too much for Das. Das broke. So then Das, when everything was in Das, which is the upper four, fell into Chesed, and then it fell into Gabura, and then it fell all the way down until everything broke, basically. So that's a basic idea. So the question is, what broke? Well, it was the, se it was the seven lower spheres, starting with Das, so it would be So what about the upper three? What happened to them? Well, because they're actually inside of the other ones, they also suffered. So they another, and the, the Chachma and the Bina, fell down to the cart of its seals. Is it can you follow this so far? Ask me a question if you if if I'm not explaining it well enough. I I I recall you learning this with uh with uh Tatar uh, many years ago. Uh, I, yeah I sent that to that share and okay. I was I was you know, I was okay. part of it. I not Okay, so this it broke. Okay, so that what broke was the seven, the seven spheros fell out of its seals. In other words, they were not close to the end of like they were before. They fell out. And they went into Olamos Bia. But the other three, that is the Kesar, the Chachma, the Bina, they were all affected because they were inside of the others. And, and the Chachma and the Bina were pulled down to the Karka of the create, what has now been created called the Tzilus. So you don't only have a Nitzilus because you have a beer. Does that make sense? So you only have a Nitzilus because you have a Bria? A beer. Well, Bria is Bria, Yitzir, and Nitzir. So we can call it Bria because you see in the, uh, Yitzir and Nitzir is inside of Bria. So, right. or outside of it, whatever. How do we have to think about that? But let, 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 let's say... Uh, yeah, so what, what happened is is that the seven lower sphere of uh, Nikudim they couldn't handle the light, and they fell out of its seals. Until this time, there was no concept of its seals. That's what I needed to say. It was only the concept of the Nakudin, who came before them, which was the Akudin. It was only the Akudin, the the the, uh, the the excuse me, the Akudin and the Nakudin. That's all there was. And now that the break has taken place, now there's a different categorization. Which is called the Tzilus and Bia. Is that okay? This, this goes back to the, uh, this is where you said the, the spots of the, the, the flocks of Yaakov when you left uh, the book. Right? That, yeah, that, yeah, there's another one called Barudin, but we're not talking about that yet. So at any rate, we just want to know about the Shvira took place in Olam Hanakudi. And I described how the Shvira, so what, what happened is, is that both Chachma and Bina were affected. And so I, I only want to talk about what happens to Bina. That the lower part of Bina, or the outside, the Hitzonius of Bina, falls down to the Karka of this newly imagined Tzilus. Karka of Tzilus, being the very bottom, the mouthfuls of the mouthfuls of Tzilus is where, where this falls down. And this is called Leia. Later on, it's going to be called Leia. And this is the origin of Leia. Leia is the Acharayim of Bina. So the Acharayim, so the effect of the collapse of everything, like you're on the, you're the skyscraper. And the uh, first three floors, the penthouse floors, are all suspended by a much, from up above, let's say. But the lower ones all collapse. So they're now they're, in, they're hanging in space there. And what happens is, is that the acharayim of them falls down into the karka of the 
zero. We're all the way down to the bottom instead of being as we have been at the bottom. And a lot of the davening has to do with the resurrection of Leah. Bringing Leah up to the place where she used to be, which we're calling now the Chaz Lamal, basically from the neck area down to the chest. She's going to be resurrected through our davening. I don't know if resurrection is the right word, but rehabilitated. And I'm thinking that what happens with Chokmah is that's going to be Yaakov, but I'm not sure that I remember that right now. Now this is a little introduction, and we're just, you know, we've learned so long. Let's, we have, let's say we've got another five minutes, okay? And think about these other things or something else you might like to learn. Uh, I think that would be good personally myself to get into Parshas Pinchas or really somebody needs to know and to learn. I don't know how much you're interested in in, uh, in meditation, but it can have a tremendous effect, which I'm lazy and as long as everything's going good, I don't, I don't really bother myself to hide more, but things don't always go good. And at that point, it could be really nice to have these tools that prayer tools. Uh, let's see, uh, and Rabbi Memon's, uh, you know, surprises me here. Good. Uh, let me see what we got here. We're on Drush Base. Yosef the Beer the Inyan the Avor. So he said the Nevair Inyan Zang Yosef Ba'orech. So you see that we're going to get into this concept deeper. He says, uh, Da, Sha Inyan the Avor who Mamash Bechinus Ibu. The word of Yavor is really the Indian of pregnancy, the conception. Just say pregnancy. So you find like this, it's what? The word Yavor, Heim Osius Ivor. It's the same word. So this Ivor, we're talking about what? Is the aspect of Leah. Who is Leah? Leah is the Nukva El Yayu Bizeo She's the upper female, well, I'm not showing this here. She's the upper female aspect of Zeo Okay, now, what we're going to see here is an answer to a question that I've had, and I've been asking this question. He keeps talking about the Yuchud between Yaakov and Leah above the Chaz. So I think we got the idea that above the Chaz, it would tell us that. That's really where she's at. She can spread all the way down to the le level of Yaakov. Maybe Yaakov goes up. I don't really know, but she can spread. Now let's um, let's understand where Yaakov is. Who is Yaakov? So Yaakov is the husband, the real his real wife, or the wife that he intends is Rachel. It's Yaakov and Rachel who make the reproduction. But wait a minute. We're saying over here he also reproduces with Leah. So how does it work? <laughs> how does it work? What's the secret? So we have a couple of minutes. Let's just read number Aleph, and then we'll see. And to me, this is, okay, it's exciting. I have to try to keep myself in check. Uh, he said, the, uh, so I, so we're just in a light print now. The drush zat mavar harab barichos. Now it's going to go into depth. Ob tarabim v'biurim v'inyin kevanus yavor more detail on what happens when you say that word. So now we're explaining the whole idea of what's going on in Yavor. Over there, there is a concept of pregnancy. Who's getting pregnant? So the remnants of this is and then in the words of Yavor, so he says it again. So he says that you have within the concept of Yavor, it's also the concept of impregnation or being pregnant. So he says, number number base, he says, the eighth So now the Rav explains, Shah Ivar on the Asik Han the Eva that we're talking about there here, the Tefilah's Yavor, in the Tefilah of Yavor, Huba parts of Leah, that's where we're talking about the pregnancy of Leah. He says, upper, he's, she is Zeranfin's upper wife. She omedes ma'al parts of Rachel, and where is she? She stands on top of the parts of Rachel. Rachel hi hanukva hatachtain. So Leah is a nukva el yayna, and Rachel is a Leah tach, is the nukva tachtain. Now I'm very excited about this. 
Uh, do you have time to learn one more? Sure. Okay, so we'll take it one at a time. Uh, and I only went so far, but it was a hard one later on for me. So he said, Be'er inyan shoresh on the fashos v'ha neshamos nimshach v'smaleya v'rach. So he has a distinction, which I point out in my shiur, and is there's a bit different between the nefesh and the nisham. So we have to see, he says, like, again, the, his blurb says that that the nefashos and the shamos come from Leia and Rafa. So it comes from both of them, it comes from one of them. Each one gets one, how's it work? So I say, So here we're talking about our nishamas. Where do our nishamas come from? He called the Shamba Shavatahtainim because all of the Nishamas in the lower world. So again, understanding the word Nishamba by itself means Panini. I mean, we understand Nishamas goes along with the word breathing and stuff like that. But it's Nishamos are Nishimos, I don't know. So, but at any rate, uh, here we're talking about Nishamas as a Panini. It says, it called Nishamos Shavatahtainim. So all the Paninis of the lower world, Nimshakas min Leia the Rafa, all of them come from these two. Leia and Rafa. Yes, Nim Shafas Malaya, there are those that come from Leia, but Yes, Nim Shafas Mel Rafa, and those that come from Rafa. Behine Naida, so it's Nocha Malaya, Nim Shafa Nisham, Nim Shu Nisham. And we know that from Leia comes Nishamos, because she, maybe because she's higher up, which means that she's more Panini. Or Men Rafa Nim Shafas Nisham. So the concept of Nishamos is coming from Rafa. Now let me just take a moment. And go through these lights, these eyes again. The word neshama. Uh, th there's other words for neshama and nafashos, which is oro, that they're light. So in the uh, Shara Kudim, he starts to explain the nature of the light. So he says that the lights are called, and I've mentioned this before. I have it in uh, video where you can see it. Is the concept of Naranki. So Naranki tells you an order of the light. From the bottom to the top, there's nefesh. That's the lowest order of light. Now, light is the most paninistic part of reality. Now, just say, we don't mean the light that we talk about here. We mean the light of the answer. That's the most paninistic part of the reality. And uh, so that's light. So the light gets refracted into four different ways. One of the, first, the lowest form of it is called a nefesh. The next one is called ruach. The next one is called neshama. This is also called by the acronym Naran. So the Naran actually enters into Partsufim. That's the Panemius we were talking about. And then there's another, the Naran Chi. The Chi part is Chaya Yehida. So Chaya is, we've already learned about this, is a Makif. But it's the weaker of the Makif, Makifim, because it comes in and it goes back out because it's too strong. But it's close enough in other words, it surrounds the Panemius. And so in such a way, it gets really right next to the Panemius. It can come into the Panemius, but doesn't stay. So it's called a Makif. And in other places we saw in Berchus Kahanim, that we were talking, we're talking about this on top of the head of Zerantim, let's say. So, but let's say it's outside. And then on top of that is the Yechida. Yechida is a light that is so unbelievably uh, far away and un un understandable that it never comes in it always shines from the outside, but although we say you know, that you can bring it in in the Berkus Kahan. But that's the concept of the Ranti. It's an important to understand that you're waiting. The Shama is more Panini than the Fasha. So let's go now to number Hey. So the Chain Srikos and the Shama is Ma'abor Tefila Derech Leia. So therefore, the way this has to go, if that's 100% correct, I thought he contradicted himself a bit later, but maybe he didn't. He said, the chain srifas and neshama la avar techida derech leah. So therefore, if you're talking about neshama, since they're supposed to come from leah, then they, they have to start first. Vachakat na'asas nashon seichem. And then after that, their soul, they're not, the nefesh part, nimshach of derech lafa. So what he's just saying, like it's a chain reaction, comes out of leah, it is more panini, and it comes to a clothing of it. So that's another way to look at Naranthi. The Rathi is one one light clothing another one until you get to get uh, Chaya, uh, Chaya which are perhaps, perhaps I think they're a different system, which I could show you sometime if we could get a video. So he says, Aval Mesh 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 Nasho, 
But there are those who nefesh, which means the chitzonius part of the life, v'nishmaso, and the more benimi part of the life, shtechem nimshachos men laya, both of them come from there. They're going hashvatim. Because look at the shvatim. You have the shvatim of the b'nei laya, and then the Reuben, Shimon, Levi, you know, so on and so forth. V'yech misha nafshem nishmaso shtechem men rachel, but there are also people who have a nefesh and a neshama that comes from rachel. Now just let me check one thing. He put nefesh before neshama. So he said, in the tribes, you see that the nefesh and neshama can come either from Rachel, Rachel or Leah. So if, let's say you come from Leah, so that you're, you're going to be a, uh, a, a nefesh and, uh, a nefesh and, and neshama from her. You go in B'nai Rachel, yes, your men, so for, the, for example, they have a nefesh and neshama that come from there. Fein kam makom bir of damazud. This is not the place, though. He says, I want to get into this. So you could see there's a door over there, and uh, you could go in and see some fantastic stuff. And we're not Steve, so let's do number Gimel, and I think I'm going to finish after we get to, well, we've got a little ways to go, and so let's see what he says. So he says, There are two different kinds of Yehudim. One of them is for the purpose of giving birth to the interior life called Neshama. The Zibuk base the Kiyam So that's how he explains it. That's what the Neshama means. It's where the life, the, the physical life is, and where the physical world of this strength event is coming from the Nefesh. The Mavar HaRav Shazibugi Leah Barachal. So the Rav explains that the Zibugim that takes place with Leah and Rachel, Heim Litzorach Oledes Neshama Satachtayim, is all of those Yehudim are the purpose, are for the purpose of bringing that energy of the Neshama uh, uh, down into the lower world. Rach Sheyesh Neshama Shabbos for Leah, but then Neshama Satam from Leah, but Yesh Neshama Shabbos for Malachim. So the Heim Sark Shnei Zibugim, so therefore you have to have two different Zibugim. Zibug the Zav Aleya the Avor. So now he explains it, and we've seen this already five times. So it's of Zah and Leia and the Yavor, they have a Yichud. The Zibug Yaakov and Rachel, but the Tivus of Payim and the Yichud of Yaakov and Rachel takes place when we go to the Tivus of Payim. Well, most of the Rab the voice, and the Rab goes on and explains like this: the Shark the Daz, the Sark the Daz. You have to know. Shakal on the Shamos and the Nisolus Khan the Tachtani, all of the Shamos that we find here in the lower world, the Koran Kul Balea Barachu. So, this is the importance of understanding what's going on now. He really came right to the answer to the question that I've been having. What do you need to make it with, with Leia for? Because uh, Rachel is the the uh, the one that Yaakov wants. That's that's the one. So he said, "Rabbi Yeshayahim Malaya, but there's those who come from Malaya. Rabbi Yeshayahim Malachol, Kamosh Yevor the Hemshech." As we're going to explain, he's going to get into this. Old Mefarach Rab. Now the Rab comes and explains further. Yesh Kilot Ben Misha Nishmaso Nimshach Malaya. There's a difference. A person has a Nishama that comes from Malaya. The Ben Misha Nishmaso Nishmaso Nimshach as Malachol are though the person whose Nishama comes from Malachol. And the Shama is Makorim Balea because the Shama, the basic idea is that the deep depth of life is coming from Leah. Banifashos, which is the more physical, the heels part of it, is coming from Rachel. So he said, Vavakain, Vavakach, the Derek Klau. So generally speaking, you have to know this. Srikos Kulum the Abo Derek Shnei. It is necessary that both of them have to go through both of their of, of the mother. The uh, the the hadchilo at the beginning and the shemus so over is derech leah, so at the beginning with the shemus start passing through leah. Kevin shem the shemus and the asid the leah because the shemus come out of leah. Vach and the asid now shall say him and then after that they pick up their nefesh and then shachas derech rachel and they go through rachel. Now that makes good sense in the sense that leah is on the top. Leah is the more panimi part. He's saying uh, it's an aspect of being itself. And Rachel is the lower part. She's the earth mother, kind of idea. Galza who bedera klalos. But here we're talking about, you know, the general idea. Let's understand that's the way they go. See, the robe and the shamas, because the majority of the shamas and the shamash and nimshech and malaya all come from nimshech and malaya. If you want to know about the shamas, they mostly come from malaya. Von nefesh ben Rachel, the life itself, the earth mother itself, achyesh yotzim 
but there are others now. That's the way it goes. That's the way it should. It, it, it's normal. But there's others that are not included in that. Sheikh the Nafsham Nishmas and Munshaf is the Leah because there are those who have both coming from Leah. So he said, so he says, like Leah, Ruvain, Abishima, and then Charbonnet Leah, all the rest of the just six kids, and it's not a kid. But there's also those from the Neshama that comes and the Nefesh that comes in Rocha. And who are those? Who go Neshvata and B'nai Rocha, Shehem Yosef, the Binyanim, the Ein Kan Mat Maharach, the Gevar He says, We're not going to go into that, really walk into that, don't go into it. The Lon Nim Sibir, Akhdam Azuz, and then the Tiv adds on this, he says, But the truth is, he's not that he mentioned all of that. Below Nimsa Bira Damazu Yosef the Gong Bira Rabbi says I've looked through the Bibri of Rab and I don't see this door anywhere to go into it. So the question is, so he said it, that's a fact, and that's where we'll stop today. Oh, that was a lot of Torah today. Thank you so much for giving me your time. Thank you. I was just gonna make reference to the Sakar and uh that's eight hundred and thirty, uh, which is the total time that the and the Bais uh, Shani existed. Because of the learning Torah all that time? Uh, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. You too, Carlton. Thanks so much.